Carol Ann Sherman, bringing you another short lesson in painting on UFO. Today I'm going to do something that's really important to most artists, and don't be afraid of it. Self-portraits are great, even if you never show them to, any, to anyone. What you should be doing is painting things that you know, and painting things that you know well. And a self-portrait makes sense, because what do we know better than what we look like? So today I'm going to do a quick little self-portrait on UFO for you. We're going to use a blue-gray background to start, as in most of my UPOs. For those of you who know, I work all pretty much on UPO. And as in most of my other UPOs, I'm going to keep one color background, keep the synergy going, which in this case will be a whole bond blue-gray. And we're going to start out very carefully with a little paint on the paper. UPO, for those of you who don't know, is a polypropylene material. I'm going to get it spread all over just so that we are almost finished before we even start. You can paint on both sides of UPO. The really nice thing about it is that if you don't like what you do, you can throw it in the bathtub and wash it out and start over again. It won't always wash out the drawing, but it will wash off the paint. Pretty much. Some, some of your stainers will leave a little more of a mark. So we're going to start with this. One of the things to remember is when you begin a UPO painting, if you see that you've gotten some marks on it that you don't want, you just take a piece of tissue, toilet paper in this case, come in, rub them down, get rid of those fingerprints, any place the paper is not adhering. I don't wear any jewelry when I paint on UPO because it tends to mar the surface. Uh, so I kind of do without it. Okay. Now we're going to come in and take a roller. I'm going to go in here and do sort of a flat background on this one because it's bordering on abstract portraiture. And I'm going to come in and lay these tissues down and take out a pattern. Figure painting and caricatures and portraiture all kind of belong to the same DNA pattern. If you think of it on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being reality or photorealism, and 10 being those little portraits you get at a party where they have little tiny hands that look like this, make us all look a little silly, the big teeth like this and the little hands that look like that. That would be a number 10. And this is going to fall somewhere in the middle. It's not a caricature, but it's a little bit beyond the middle way to reality. So, And that's OK. This blue-gray is a really nice color to begin with. You have to lift it before you're doing flesh tones. When I paint like this, most of the time I'll paint on a yellow background or a, some kind of a really compatible color. In this particular painting, I'm not because I want to use this color and leave a lot of it just as I'm putting it down now. We'll take a final roll with this ever so useful toilet paper. Take off the excess paint. This also allows you to see your pencil drawing. We're going to move right into putting the flesh tones in this. In this particular painting, I am going to take the blue out where I'm going to do flesh tones first because flesh tones are not going to be really compatible with this blue color. So I'm just going to use plain water, and I'm going to paint over the areas I want to lift out. We'll start with some of the things I know are going to be lifted out. You have to work fairly fast with this because the paint will dry and you won't be able to lift it out. You can always wet it again, so it's not quite the end of the world, but you want to be a little quicker with it. Don't give it the chance to get the better of you. We're going to lift it out like that. That leaves us just a very slight residue of the blue, which is okay. That'll work out well with our paint. I know, sometimes you can't hardly see your drawing after you get the paint on here, but that's part of the fun of it. It's always a surprise when it comes up the way you want it to be. face. Now those little blue parts that are remaining at this point don't really disturb me. 
Uh, use a smaller brush for this. Let's go right around the edge. We want the top of the nose to be light because there's going to be a highlight there. The hair is going to be darker. This is actually going to be shadowed, so I'm going to leave that sort of blue. Our highlights are going to come down the middle of the face this way, and across the cheek that way, and that way. Sadly, I don't have blue-gray eyes. Maybe someday we'll be able to do that. I work from a running palette. This is the way I set up my palette, this my Jello 33 colors, because I like to have all these options to work with. Some of them I pre-mix and some of them I use straight from the tube. And two of the colors that are my favorites for when I'm doing portraits of any kind would be Joan Brillant number one. This looks like this. And I'm not using too much water here. Because if you do, the paint will just lift right off the Yupo. I don't paint on an easel because the paint will fall off the paper. Got to be on a nice firm base. Joan Brillant number two. I have a little photo that I'm working with, which I'm going to use to pull up some of these darker areas. This side of the face seems to be much darker, so we're going to start by going in there with the Joan Brillant number two, run it alongside the nose so that the lighter part of that nose will show. Under the mouth, there's a serious shadow, as always. Under the neck. I'm going to go in between the hair here. I did not remove all the blue paint, but I'm going to go with the Joan Brillant number two and go in between some of the hair where it's coming down on this neck. There's an earring right there. We're going to go between it. Bottom of the nose is going to be a little darker. Right there is going to be a little darker. Actually, the whole top of the face is going to be shadowed a bit. Let's go in and work on the lips a little. We don't want them too bright or too hard. I'm going to mix up a shell pink. with a bright rose. Now I'm going to take my little roller again, another little roller, a big roller, and I'm going to go over the flesh tones to get them blended a little more. They're just a little too patchy looking for me. 